2010 through 2015 Lexus RX 450H Hybrid Spark Plug Replacement. I'm Brian Esso from How To Automotive. I'm gonna walk you step by step through the process of changing out the spark plugs. So before I dive into this job, I like to hook a scan tool up and do what they call auto scan and scan all the modules for any uh, potential diagnostic codes. And the reason why is I'm gonna power down the hybrid system and disconnect all the batteries and then do a major repair and after I'm done, I'll rescan the vehicle. And if some of the old codes were there previously, I know that those were old codes and I need to address those. And if I have new codes, then I know that something went wrong with the repair and I need to address that. So the first thing I'm gonna do after clearing the codes is disconnect the, the 12 volt battery system. So you're gonna go here in the back of the car where the spare tire is and remove the negative battery cable. After that, we're gonna power down the high voltage system. And you're gonna do that by opening the, the driver rear door. And just below the passenger seat, there's a little panel. You're gonna pop this panel out. Now we're gonna pull out the service plug to make this safe to work on. And I recommend you use class zero 1000 volt safety gloves. And then we're gonna pull this little tab here. So you're gonna slide it backwards towards the rear of the car. And then you're gonna pull the tab outwards towards you like this and then pull the whole plug out. Now the hybrid battery system is in a service mode and it's safe to work with and not risk of uh, being electrocuted. I also recommend that you take the plug and the key fob and put it on your toolbox away from the vehicle. That way nothing accidentally gets turned on while we're working. Now back under the hood, we can go ahead and remove all these plastic panels that go around the engine. So you're gonna do all of them on the left and right side and the center. So just remove the clips. You're gonna pop these little clips out and then lift these panels off and set them aside. Once you got those panels removed, the next step is to remove all those cowling pieces up here where the wiper motors and stuff are. You can also go ahead and pull the top engine cover by just lifting straight upwards. It's just held on with some rubber grommets and you're gonna pop it off and then set this aside. So now I'm gonna start removing the wiper arms. I'm gonna pull these little covers off and remove the 14 millimeter nuts that are under the covers and uh, take those off. So I'm gonna be using a lot of power tools in this video to make this job much quicker. If you have them, I recommend you use them. If you don't have them, I will leave links for all these tools that I'm using in the description of the video. So go ahead and remove the nuts. And then after you do that, you can take the arms and kind of just wiggle them back and forth and they'll work them, themselves off and they'll pop off. You also wanna make note of where the windshield wipers are laid on the glass. So when you go to put them back on, they'll go back on the same way. Now that you got the wiper arms removed, we're gonna remove the clip here. And there's gonna be a clip on the opposite side here. We're gonna remove this clip here. There's gonna be a clip back here in the back and then on the same thing on the driver's side here, there's a clip here. We're gonna remove all those clips. So there's a couple panels on the side of the uh, fenders here that we need to remove first. So you'll just pull these clips upwards like this and then the little rubber grommet will be caught in the corner. You need to pop that off. And you're gonna do that for the, both the left and the right side of the vehicle. After you get those removed, then you can lift these um, the main plastic portion of it uploads like this and then you're going to lift up and then pull towards you it's going to be hooked on the back of the glass there's also going to be these little catches right back here underneath the hinge here so you're going to reach around and pop this panel upwards and then once you get this popped upwards like this you can just leave it attached just pop it up like there and now you can start pulling the uh the plastic portion of it towards you and out and you're going to do that for both the left and the right side so you'll pop this little panel up like that and then you're gonna pull the main plastic portion out and then you can set this aside now we're gonna disconnect the motor here unplug the electrical connectors a little plastic catch right here we're gonna pop that loose and we're gonna pull the rubber grommet we're gonna pull this wiring harness we're gonna pull it through and out so we're gonna work the wiring harness out like this just pull it through and once you get it pulled through you're just gonna tuck it over here on the engine side there's also gonna be a little plastic tab right here that we need to pop off once you get that all removed, you can remove the four bolts holding the wiper motor assembly on. One of the bolts is kind of hidden behind the little molding back there, so go ahead and remove those four bolts. Now you can lift the whole wiper motor assembly out like this and set this aside for now. Now that you got the wiper motor removed, we're going to remove the 10mm bolt here, the 10mm bolt nut here, and we're going to remove the 10mm bolt here, the 10mm bolt here in the back, and then there's a 10 back here in the back and a 10 millimeter nut there. After we get those all removed, we're going to remove the 14 millimeter nut there and there, not the one on the side here. So we're going to remove the two on there and then we're going to remove the two 14 millimeter nuts here. Once all those bolts are removed, you can go ahead and grab the whole tray assembly here and lift up and pull towards you and then you can pull it out and set this aside. 
Now we can go ahead and remove the four 10 millimeter bolts on the coils here and unplug the coils and remove these coils out. And as you see the, the orange cables here, how close they are to where we're working, that's the reason why we power down this hybrid system. We don't want any chances of getting electrocuted. So go ahead and pull those coils out and set those aside. So if you look down the tubes and you find that these are filled with oil, you'll need to replace the valve cover gaskets themselves, but mine are dry and not in need of that. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the spark plugs. I use the standard 5.8 socket and the extension with a, uh, with a hand ratchet. I recommend doing these by hand. It's easy to strip aluminum cylinder heads and you don't wanna do that on this vehicle. I'm gonna be installing Denso replacement spark plugs. They are the uh, factory plugs. These come already pre-gapped. It's not recommended that you gap these. The tips on these are super fine and easily damaged. And if you tried to gap them, you could uh, ruin them. And you also look, there's no anti-seas on the original ones. We're not gonna install anti-seas on them. We're just gonna put them back in the way they came out of the car, which was dry without anti-seas. So I threaded them in by hand, and then I torqued them down with a torque wrench to 13 foot-pounds. After that, I went ahead and reinstalled the coils, plugged the coils back in, and reinstalled all the 10 millimeter bolts and tightened those all back down. So now we're gonna start removing the air snorkel here. So you'll remove the 10 millimeter bolts at the front of it, and then you're gonna pull it at an angle and pull it off like this. This portion of it's gonna stay. We're gonna remove the 10 millimeter bolt right here at the back. Now you can understand why we powered down the hybrid system. We're working in the vicinity of it. We're not taking apart anything with the hybrid system. But because we're working around it, I like to be safe and disconnect it. So go ahead and pop that bolt out, and then you can pull the snorkel out like this. Now you can squeeze the tab here and pull this vent line off the manifold and fold it backwards out of your way. And then there's another hose right here. You're going to pull this off and fold it backwards out of your way. Now you can go ahead and loosen up the, uh, the clamp right here. I'm going to go ahead and pull out the air cleaner assembly here. So I'm going to pull the... Uh, the clips here and then pull the air box out like this and uh, set this aside for now. We'll change out, I'm gonna change out the filter. I recommend you do it too when you do this tune up. Then I can pull the vent line here off the boot off like this. And then right between the two high voltage cables coming in here is a 10 millimeter bolt here and here that we need to remove. Then you can unplug the mass airflow sensor here on the back right here and then it's held on with a little wire uh, catch here. Pop this little wire loom holder off and unplug that. Also, the tube here running across, you can pop it out of this little catch right here in the back. So go ahead and pop that out. Now you can pull the air boot off the throttle body, and then uh, you can start lifting the whole air cleaner assembly straight up. It's held on with one more rubber grommet at the bottom. So now you can pull it out and set it aside. That and if you look just to the left of the cable, you can see where that grommet mounted. So now we're going to unbolt the throttle body. We're going to remove the four 10 millimeter bolts holding the throttle body on. And we're going to take the throttle body and just set it down in this area. We're going to leave everything plugged in and connect it to it. Don't disconnect anything. Just set it down like this once you get it unbolted. Now there's a 12 millimeter bolt right here in the back. That's a support bracket. We're going to remove that bolt. I just used a flex head ratcheting ratchet like this to get to it and remove that bolt. Now on top of the manifold, we can plug, unplug the uh, map sensor here. So squeeze the tab, pull that off. And then here in the back, there's some brackets we need to get to. And I'll try to get the camera down here so you can see what I'm talking about. So we need to get to this bolt right here, this 12 millimeter bolt, and take this bolt out. There's enough room to reach back here with your hands and a ratchet and, or a ratcheting wrench and uh, get to those. So I just reached around like this. I already have the ratchet down here. And there's just enough room to get your hands back here and crack that bolt free. Now, after you get that removed, you can remove the, the four five millimeter Allen screws and the two 10 millimeter nuts holding the intake manifold on or the plenum on. After you get those all removed, you can start lifting the plenum upwards. So you'll lift it straight up. And then once you get it lifted up high enough to clear the two studs, you'll pull towards you. So you'll pull it out towards you. And then there's going to be a little wire loom here in the back. We need to squeeze the little tab here and pop that off right there. This is that support bracket on the corner here that we had to get to, and it was mounted right there. That was the one we reached around the back here to, uh, to get to. Now to prevent anything from falling in the engine while we're working, I went ahead and put some rags over the ports here. Now I'm working on getting the wiring harness right here where the coils are plugged in, uh, some slack in it. So I'm gonna pull these little tabs and pull them off the little bracket here. And now you can unplug the coils. And there's also a little, bra a little tab over here on this side, on the driver's side. You can pull that. Now you got some slack in the wiring harness to get back here where you can work on it. To get to these ignition coils and get them out, we need to take this heat transfer pipe out. It's mounted here in the back. This is the silver thing here with the hoses hooked up to it. Uh, we need to unbolt this and then we're gonna flip this out of our way. So there's a 12 millimeter bolt, bolt here 
a 12 millimeter bolt right back here that we need to get to and then there's a third one all the way in the back so after you get the two on the left and the right here unbolted it, the third bolt is in the back it kind of goes underneath here and if you look around the from the side here you can see that that bolt right there so you can get to that bolt by reaching around the back like this and getting a socket or a ratcheting wrench on it and remove the bolt or what you could do is come from over the top with a extension and a wobbly socket like this and you can also get to the uh, the bolt on the back. So right here where the tube mounts right here, we're gonna remove a 10 or 12 millimeter nut there and a 12 millimeter nut there. And then we're gonna follow this tube around and downwards right here is two 12 millimeter nuts right there. We're gonna remove those two nuts. Once it's all unbolted, we're gonna start removing it. There's gonna be these two little metal gaskets right here. We don't wanna uh, lose these, we're gonna uh, reuse them. So they're gonna be one on each side of the tube. So once you get those all removed, You'll take the heat transfer box here and push it towards the firewall and then lift upwards and that'll clear the studs on this. And then you can flip the uh, whole assembly up and over like this. So you're gonna pull it towards the front of the vehicle and you can see these brackets and stuff that we were getting referring to earlier. So you're gonna flip it over like this and just hold it there. Now you can get access to the coils and go ahead and unbolt the coils, unplug the coils and go ahead and remove all the coils. With a mirror, I went ahead and checked to make sure that the tubes weren't filled up with oil and I had to replace the valve cover gasket. So on this vehicle, nothing was leaking. So I went ahead and proceeded to remove the uh, spark plugs while using the standard 5.8 socket and a little bit shorter extension than I did with the uh, front one there. So I fed the extension down there like this and went ahead and removed all three spark plugs. After removing all three of the spark plugs and then installing the new ones, torquing them down to 13 foot pounds, I went ahead and put the coils back in. And then I put the nuts back on them and go ahead and tighten those all up and then started all the connectors for the harness. Went ahead and re-secured the wiring harness back down like this onto the little catches. Now I'm going to take the coolant heat transfer box here and flip it back into position and uh, start the, the uh, nuts. You also want to make sure that these uh, these metal gaskets are in place. If they're, they're not lost, you want to make sure that you, those are there. Go ahead and slip that back on and then you can go ahead and start the, the nuts that held the pipes on and then the, the three bolts that held the uh, bracket on. I recommend you leave them all loose until all the bolts and nuts are started and then once they're all started then you can go ahead and tighten them all down. To get to the bolt in the back I used a wobbly socket with a piece of paper stuffed in it and stuffed the bolt in there. That way it held, holds into place, reached around back and started the bolt and once I got them all started I went ahead and tightened them all down. Now on the manifold here, I'm going to take out all the old uh, gaskets, throttle body gasket and the uh, intake gaskets here and I'll install new ones. I will link these all up in the description of the video. So go ahead and pick these out and change those out. Now you can go ahead and remove the rags and if these ports need to be cleaned up, clean these ports up, wipe them down, make sure being careful not to knock any debris into the engine. Right here is going to be the map sensor connector. I want to make sure I tuck it up there so it doesn't get uh, forgot to be unplugged back in. So once you get that tucked out of the way like that, now we can take the manifold and slide it. You're going to slide that bracket underneath here. So we want this bracket here to slide underneath that tube back there in the, in the position. Once you've got it slid in, in there, you can drop it down. You also want to make sure that that wire loom for the uh, map sensor is in a good spot. So go ahead and... Uh, Make sure that's not going to get tucked underneath it when you put this in so slide it into position Once you get into position you just drop the whole manifold down onto the studs now you can go ahead and plug this map sensor in Then you can start all the five millimeter allen bolts and the two ten millimeter bolts on the end and while the bolts are started and still loose I go ahead and reach around the back here and start the uh, the bolt that hold the support bracket on. With it loose, it's easier that way. Now I can run those bolts down to their snug and go ahead and, and uh, torque them all down. These are all torqued down to 15 foot-pounds. A crisscross star pattern similar to you would do a wheel. Now you can take the uh, support bracket bolt here and install that here and tighten that bolt up. After that, you can take the throttle body here and lift it back into position and start the four bolts. And you can torque these all down to 15 foot-pounds. There's also a little bracket that you want to make sure you get the bolt stabbed through on the bottom corner. I torque these all down to 15 foot-pounds in a crisscross pattern also. Now you can take these two vent lines here and go ahead and plug those back in. And make sure you put the squeeze clamp back on. So uh, plug that back in right here and put the clamp back on. After that, we can put the air box assembly in. You want this... Uh, port here to stab into that rubber grommet down there next to the high power cable and then uh, and we're going to slip it on underneath this uh, hose here and onto the throttle body itself.
you want to also make sure the hose clamp is on right here. So we go ahead and slip this into position. So you slide the, underneath that little rubber hose I was telling you and slide it down into position. Stab it onto the throttle body. And once you get it stuck onto the throttle body, then you can kind of just look around the back and kind of see where that little port was and line it up. And once you get it lined up, you just kind of push the air cleaner assembly downwards until it pops into place. Then you can take the hose here that went across and plug that back into this little catches. And there's a, and you can tighten up the, uh, the throttle body clamp right there and then the vent tube here on the side you can go ahead and install that onto the air cleaner assembly so push that vent tube on and put the clamp back on it then you can start the two 10 millimeter bolts that went on the front of the air box that went between the two high power uh, cables there go ahead and start those two bolts and then once you got them all started you can tighten them all down once you got the bolts tightened down the throttle body uh, clamp tightened down here you can also plug in the mass airflow sensor and then follow the wiring heart loom around where it has a little catch and make sure that it's all plugged back in. So the plug the mass airflow sensor in and the little wire loom holder in the back, plug that in. So now I'm going to go ahead and change out the air filter. So replace it with a new one, put that into the box and slide that back into place and then uh, re-secure the clamps on the, uh, on the air filter here. So just slide it back in and then re-secure the clips. Now I'm going to install the inner air snorkel piece here onto the air box. So I'll slide it down into position like this and then start the 10 millimeter bolt at the front. Now I'm going to install the outer air snorkel. So I'll put it in at an angle like this and you kind of have to flex this a little bit and then stab it onto this port here and then start the two 10 millimeter nuts at the front. Tighten those down. Now I'm going to take the top engine cover here and then reinstall it. It has these little rubber grommets on the bottom here. So the, these rubber grommets here mount onto these little ports right here and here. So you'll look for those ports and then you'll uh, line it up and you'll just push it on until it snaps into place. Now we're going to take the large tray here that mounts the uh, windshield wiper assembly and slide it back into position. So you'll slide it back underneath the cowling here and slide it up into position and drop it down. You'll make sure that wiring harness here is out of the way. And once it's uh, dropped into position, then we can go ahead and start all the 10 millimeter bolts all the way around it and the 14 millimeter bolts on the uh, left and right side. Once those are all installed and tightened back down, then we can go ahead and reinstall the uh, wiper motor assembly itself. So slide it into place, line up all four of the uh, bolts and start the bolts and tighten those down. After that, you can feed the wire loom through and then start the connector here and feed the wire loom through the hole and plug in the uh, motor and then re-secure the uh, grommet at the uh, front here. So you work that until it seats into there properly. Top cover. Now we're gonna install the top cover. It has these hooks here that hook underneath the edge of the glass. So it's gonna hook right on the edge of the glass right here. So we need to hook those underneath. So you'll slide this into position and line it up. You'll also have to pull these little boots over here, or the plastic molding on the corners. You have to pull those out of the way. So you'll, you'll I, what I did is I started on one corner and lifted it up, slid it under the glass, and kind of you have to look back here and uh, line everything up. And once you get it slid underneath, you can slide it back and then drop it down into position. And then the little moldings in the corners there, just pop those back into the little holes. There's little holes that you line up and pop those back in. And then once you get it lined up, you just push it down until it clicks into the into place on the front edge here where I'm pushing down right now. Once that's installed in the corners here, there's these little moldings that need to be popped back into place on the right, right below the uh, hinge here. You need to pop those back into place on the left and right side. Then you can start the two clips, the clips here and the clips in the back. Then you can take these plastic moldings here and you can slide them onto these ports right here. And then once you get them slid on, uh, on those ports, then you can push them down. So you slide it inwards towards the fender and then push downwards until they lock into place and you make sure everything is all lined up. And you're gonna do that for both left and right side. This cover fell off, so go ahead and install that. These little rubber uh, bushings here for the weather stripping just slip over the uh, these little tabs here. So you have to kind of stretch them over it and reinstall those on the corners. Once you got all that installed, you can install the center um, molding first, then the left and the right uh, plastic uh, cover here and then start all the, the clips. There's a about 20 of these clips here. You're gonna go ahead and reinstall all those clips. After that, you can realign the wiper arms and start the two nuts on this on the uh, on the inner one here. So you kind of have to hold it into position. So you'll you'll kind of use the the dirt and uh, witness marks on the glass here to help you line up where it was before. So you'll line it up to the to where it was, and then you'll tighten those the 14 millimeter nuts on the uh, wiper motors there. Tighten those down. 
Then you'll do the same thing for the driver's side wiper arm. Once you get all those tightened down, you can put the plastic cap that was on it. You can go and reinstall that. Now we're going to power up the hybrid system again by putting on our safety gloves, opening up the rear door, passenger door. Now we're going to plug the service plug back in. So you're going to make sure it's pulled out like this. And then you're going to uh, line up the tabs here with the tabs on the, uh, on the unit here underneath the seat. So you'll slide it inwards. And uh, I had to lift the carpet up just a little bit right there in the corner and then slide it in until it, uh, until it bottoms out. And then you push it like this. And as you push it, it'll swing this little arm over and it'll, and it'll go all the way in and then you push it towards the front of the vehicle to lock it into place. We wear these gloves to prevent a, a spike and a voltage jumping out at you and shocking you or electrocuting you. So once you get that installed now, you can go ahead and take the glove off and then reinstall this cover here. This little tab mounts into the little plastic grommets. You can go ahead and push those on until it locks into place. Now we can go back here in the trunk area and then flip up the cover here and then reinstall the, uh, the, the low voltage uh, battery cable here and tighten that down. Now you can resecure everything in the trunk. Now what I did was I powered up the, um, the car. So I put the key back in, the key fob back in, pushed the power system on and just let it power up without my foot on the brake for a few seconds. After a few seconds, then I started the vehicle up. After that, I installed a scan tool and, uh, and then I ran another full system scan on the uh, car just to make sure that there's no codes in the hybrid system or anything like that. So after I, I was uh, done reading all the codes off and verifying that there was no problems caused by the work that I did, then I went on a test drive. So I will link up all the parts and tools that I use in this video in the description and that'll complete the job of replacing the spark plugs on a RX450H. I'm Brian Esser from How To Automotive. I'd like to thank you guys for watching my videos, encourage you to subscribe, invite you to head over to the howtoautomotive.com website for more valuable videos like this. Thank you again for watching.